Hello, my name is Elliot Heffern, and I'm doing the history of zoos in America. I've like always been fascinated with zoos, and one of my goals in life is to be an animal nutritionist. I've been volunteering at my local zoo, Zoo Knoxville, so it's just one step closer to my goal, and it so just seemed right to do um, my project on zoos. For my methods and research interviews approach, I researched zoos using the school's database, and I in interviewed very good experts on the subject. I interviewed Don Dizani, who works at the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens. And in addition, I also interviewed Tori Mason, who works for N Zoo Nashville. For my artifact right here, I decided to recreate the Zoo Knoxville logo out of wood from my grandfather's farm. So the logo depicts the animals from the local zoo. So yeah, so I worked with wood and a lot and a lot of paint to cut it out. So I just hot glued it. And I used the exact um, colors of the paint from the logo. For my service project, I'll volunteer my time at the uh, local rescue center in Clinton in Tennessee named the Little Ponderosa Zoo. This center rescues, rehabilitates, and releases East Tennessee natives' wildlife. The director, Corbin Cox, told me how to clean animal habitats, clean cages, and, pre and prepare feed buckets for visiting guests. For overcoming a lot of challenges, it was pretty difficult to find the indiv individuals at zoos in the field that I can interview because most of the zoos I would email or call they would mostly send me to robots. So it would be a little hard to find a human that I could talk to to try to get an interview, but I never really got really much. But so to overcome the problem, I was persistent with follow-up calls and researching specific education department phone numbers and emails. For the conclusion, for my por portfolio research, I learned much about zoos in America and zoos all around the world. The most important part for me was learning how to research because it will help me in high school and in college and throughout all my life. Um, I am beyond thankful for Don Dizani, Tori Mason, Corbin Cox, and Miss Henrik for helping me and Miss Lancaster. I would like to also thank my grandfather, my Doug Wright, for showing me how to use the woodworking. Hello, my name is Aidan Algadir, and my project is about the history of horses and humankind, one of the most interesting aspects of the world. Let's begin. I have loved horses since I started riding back in 2019. I have had a fair amount of experience with horses, so that is why I decided to do research on the relationships between horses and humans and equine assisted services. This project helped me understand how horses have been used over many years after they were domesticated by humans. I researched this topic using online sources, especially Gale, to find out where horses came from when they were domesticated and what they were used for after they were domesticated. In addition, I used these sources to find out information about equine assisted services, which is therapy with horses. There were a variety of articles written by different authors which helped me understand all of these topics. I interviewed Lynn Clemis Petter, the director of an equine assisted services organization. organization. I interviewed her because she has had a great deal of experience with horses. For my artifact, I made an ancient cave painting of a horse. The famous cave painting came from the Lasso Cave near the village of Montignac in France. They date back to 15,000 to 10,000, 1,000 BCE to make this artifact. I took a big canvas, spread glue on the surface, and poured sand on the top of the glue to make it rough like a rock inside of a cave. I had to repeat this process multiple times to make sure that it was all covered. Next, I used pastels to put coloring on the canvas, and then I used charcoal and pastels to draw a model of a horse from the ancient cave painting. For my service project, I volunteered at STAR, Shangri-La Therapeutic Academy of Riding. I cleaned stalls and helped with turnout. I did this for my service project because I have a profusion of experience with horses. 
I also decided to volunteer at STAR because the jobs that I would have there seemed very interesting and fun. For the last part of my service project, I donated a halter and a saddle to STAR. While I was working on this project, I came across a few challenges. One challenge was filling out the note cards. That was a challenge because there were a few websites that I couldn't use, and there was a lot of information to fill out. I had to make many note cards, and that was a great amount of work. I overcame this challenge by doing my best on the note cards. I worked hard, and I tried to get my, get my best I tried my best to get all the information that I needed. The next challenge that I came across was trying to get my service hours filled out. The sheet that needed to be filled out was supposed to be signed by someone at STAR, and there was a problem. Someone at STAR wasn't able to fill out the form, and that caused a bit of frustration. I overcame this challenge because my teacher said that my mom could fill out the form. That made things way less stressful. From this project, I have learned that horses and humans have been acquaintances for a really long time. I have also learned that horses have played an important part role in human society throughout history. The part that was most important to me was the artifact because it was fun to make. And it is a copy of an ancient cave painting, which proves that horses and humans have known each other for a very long time. This experience will help me in the future because it taught me to work hard and achieve my goals. I would like to thank my parents and all my teachers for their help. I am also thankful to Lynn Clemens petter the director of STAR, for letting me interview her. Hi there, I'm Audrey Dobbs and I did my project on Broadway theater, a journey throughout the ages. Ever since I saw Aladdin at the New Amsterdam Theater, I've been fascinated by Broadway. Theater has always had such a cultural effect on me and the world around me. I wanted to understand Broadway's origins and why we love theater so dearly. My research on Broadway theater encompassed over a dozen different sources from the public broadcasting network to the Oxford Dictionary. Furthermore, I, interf I interviewed two lovely women, Rebecca Hancock and Elizabeth Talmadge. Rebecca Hancock is the executive director of the historic Tennessee Theater Foundation, while Elizabeth Talmadge has been a company manager for multiple Broadway productions. For my artifact, I created three drama masks um, with molds, plaster, newspaper, paints, feathers, and a fair amount of glitter flakes and glue. It took around six hours to complete the red, yellow, and blue masks. They each had different facial expressions, seeming jolly, sorrowful, and furious in their own right. My service project incorporated many elements that are viable for service. I worked with my classmates to help paint the sets for our musical, The Little Mermaid. In addition, I helped decide the backdrop and carried set pieces. I'm very grateful to assist Miss Winston and ESK with the play. During the project span of time, I prevailed through many trials. I had many grammatical errors in my paper, often was behind schedule for my artifact, and was constantly worrying about missing a deadline. However, I worked through this by contacting my teachers whenever there was a problem and keeping a cool head whenever obstacles emerged. The Broadway, the portfolio project taught me that I should make time for assignments so I do not procrastinate. I learned that Broadway theater is truly the peak of the theatrical artistry and deserves plenty of praise for awe-inspiring backdrops, costumes, and sets. I cannot honestly decide which part of the portfolio project was most important to me because all the elements of the project were equally valuable, equally valuable in my eyes. In high school, I will be much more prepared in language arts due to learning these skills. I'd like to thank Ms. Quaint. Ms. Lancaster, Ms. Henrik, Ms. Winston, Ms. Talmadge, Ms. Hancock, and my father. You all guided me through this exciting journey. My name is Addison Hershey, and I did the history of Taylor Swift and how she impacted the music industry. And my motivation for this is I've always been interested in Taylor Swift. I've been to one of her concerts, and I listen to her music on the daily. And so I thought this would be a really fun thing to research, and I already know a lot about her. And I think that she's just like such a cool person, does such cool things. And for my methods and research in my interview, um, for my interview, I try to get in contact with someone who kind of knew a lot of, about Taylor Swift because I knew I couldn't get her or someone she knows really. So I interviewed um, Dr. Alexandria Schwartz, and she's the curator of the Taylor Swift exhibit at the Museum of Art and Design in New York City. 
and she just works with a lot of the like the things in the exhibit, like all the costumes that go in and out, and everything with that exhibit. And I also interviewed Kathleen Campbell, and she works at the Taylor Swift Education Center at the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville, Tennessee. And she also just works a lot about like teaching Taylor Swift and learning about her. For my artifact, I decided to recreate one of her most iconic uh, outfits that she's worn on her Eras tour. And so I did the lover body suit in the pink and blue color. And I also recreated her boots that she wears. Um, this was a really fun and hard and long process, I'd say. I hand rhinestone the entire thing and uh, hand sewed on the sequins. It was really fun, but it was really tiring and hard to do. And I'm glad with how it turned out. And the boots, I just spray painted silver and um, put glitter on with Mod Podge and I painted the bottoms red because that's what she does with all of her boots. And yeah, it was really fun, but it was just really hard and it took a lot of time, but I'm so glad with how they came out. For my service project, I decided to do a fundraiser with my middle school. I charged $5 uh, from each student if they wanted to have free dress on Friday. So I stood in Gouge Hall and took, uh, took up the $5 from each student who wanted free dress on Friday. And I donated that money to the Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, because Taylor Swift had donated there and also um, there's kids who wish to meet Taylor Swift, so I thought that kind of coordinated into my project. Um, overcoming my challenges, um, like I struggled a lot with my research paper. I've never really been like a star writer, and I don't really shine with like long research papers. So I had the challenge of staying organized and just keeping all my things together. For my research paper, it was hard and my work cited to keep everything organized and stay with the format. But I got with my teachers and we worked it out and made sure I was all organized and fixed it all. Uh, in conclusion, I had so much fun doing this project. I think the research really, it just like, uh, it was so fun to do. And I took so much knowledge about all of Taylor Swift and stuff. The artifact, the service, everything was so fun. Uh, I'd like to thank the two people that I interviewed, my mom who helped me with some of the artifact because it was a lot to do, and my teachers, Ms. Hendrick and Ms. Lancaster, uh, and Make-A-Wish Foundation for helping me expand my project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pierce Welch, and I did my project on the history of the Boston Red Sox. Um, since I was little, I've always loved baseball, and it's been one of my favorite sports for a long time. And my favorite team has, has been the Red Sox for a while. And so I decided to write a research paper on them. And uh, for my artifact, I did a bat. Um, I made it with the lathe with the help of my grandpa's friend who's a woodworker and has a lathe. And so that was a really cool experience and that uh, helped me out a lot. I did my service project with my little cousins who were both eight and five and uh, I helped their baseball teams out and that was really fun and I learned a lot from that about coaching and how to coach kids right. Um, I wrote my research paper about, about the history just from the start to the end or to now. and. Uh, talked about ups and downs and the franchise and basically everything else about the Red Sox so far. Uh, my, the biggest challenges I probably faced were probably when I made the bat. When I made the bat at first, I just tried to make it and I couldn't really do that because I, I didn't have a lathe. You basically need a lathe to make a bat. And if you don't have one, it's really hard. And so then, we found this guy who had a lathe and he helped us out. And I had to basically start over and all the progress that I had made kind of hurt. Um, yeah, and uh, it's really great. This project was really great and I learned a lot of things I probably wouldn't have learned without it. And uh, 
had a really good time doing it. Hi, my name is Walker Baker, and I did my a research project on the evolution of baseball because I have played baseball for most of my life now, and I've really wanted to get deeper into the project and learn more about the sport. And I really enjoyed this project a lot because it helped me learn a lot about the sport that I never knew before. One of my favorite parts about this was interviewing. Uh, I had an interview with Alex Vesia, who is the pitcher for the Dodgers, and he told me a lot of good stuff like like what to do and like to never give up if you're going to commit to a sport of some sort. And I have uh, an artifact of a poster board, some gloves, and a field. A poster board uh, has some pictures of old, like an old-time baseballs, hats, gloves, people who have been a big uh, thing in the sport. And I also have some fun facts from the 1800s, 1900s, and 2000s. Um, I made a baseball field out of uh, cardboard and some grass and paper, which was probably one of the hardest parts because it took like a, a long time to get the pieces right and the grass cut out. Um, I and the gloves are from uh, so I have a 1930s glove that is pre-worn. 1950s glove. They have changed a lot because the little the web on it has become bigger and secures the ball better. This one is my old glove that I had was from 2010 uh, that my parents bought me when I was at, like six. This was my this is my uh, mom's mom's glove that she used when in the 1970s because uh, when she played softball, softball gloves weren't uh, invented yet in the 1970s. So I thought that was pretty unique. And this is the glove I use now, which is from the year, uh, this is from 2023. It's a newer product, has more webbing on it, secured better than these. Old ones just made out of leather and uh, string. Um, yeah, and like I feel like the gloves are one of the biggest parts of this project because it shows how much uh, like different equipment from like baseball has uh, changed and evolved since 18 since the 1800s, and I just thought it was really cool to learn about everything that I have known and learned from this sport. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed making this, and without this, I would never know. But no, I would never have the knowledge that I would have today uh, about the sport. And this project makes me want to play baseball for the rest of my life. And I really uh, appreciate the chance I had to make this project. Uh, my name is Gavin Grower, and I did roller coaster engineering for my project. Um, I researched the physics of roller coasters and how they worked. Um, the most uh, information I got, like the most useful information, was from uh, Jared Homer. He's from uh, Skyline Attractions Roller Coasters. Uh, he told me everything about the hydraulics and the G-forces. It was a, a really good interview. Uh, this is my artifact. It's a self-standing uh, roller coaster and it uh, works by itself with the motor. Um, for my service, I um, let little kids uh, help me build the roller coaster and was teaching them about how like the car will stay on like during the loopy loops and like different parts of the curves and things. Um, my challenges were some of the pieces wouldn't stay put, so I had to hot glue some of them. Uh, but I think that was my, I think that was my only challenge. Oh, my other challenge was, uh, getting an interview. That was really hard to do. Hello, I am Grant Osmond Cook IV from the Episcopal School of Knoxville. I have made an artificial resin geode for my artifact using resin, paint, and glitter. For my service, I went to Cherokee Caverns and gave candy to kids until like 8.30. It wasn't all very easy, like just standing there and pouring the resin, it has to be exactly perfect, otherwise it'll be messed up. But my motivation for this entire thing was my beloved for rocks. I've been fascinated by them ever since I moved here with me getting an electroplated geode for 
my birthday. For my interview, I interviewed a geologist named Chloe Danis from You Dig Your Way in uh, Utah. I really want to thank my grandma because she was, uh, she helped me pouring the resin perfectly and I know that I would never do that. I would also like to thank my mama because she was being, because she is very supportive. Hi, my name's Alexia Miski, and I did my portfolio project on service dogs. Um, so I've always liked how like service dogs help people and like the certain jobs that they have to do to like guide people if they're blind or there's a service dog called hearing dogs which is for deaf people that if like obviously they're deaf so they can't hear and if there's like a fire alarm or something that is happening around them to alert them the dog will start like pawing at them or just doing anything that they can do to get the person's attention so that's I just I've, I've always loved dogs and just I love how they help people if they're in need or my interview it was pretty it was hard but it was also kind of easy I just searched up like how to get or like service dog people just like stuff that they do and all that and I met or I found this really nice lady whose name is Molly Nahir and she has had a service dog because she gets these little like random seizures and so she was just telling me all of her experience about having service dogs and or her service dog and just like how they help and she works with service dogs just to like help them or just like teach service dogs from a puppy to an adult dog, just teaching them how to do certain things and all that. So for my artifact, I made this service dog vest um, for a service dog and it, it took me a good while to get it all done. I had to get this little part embroidered and to say service dog and then getting this little handle right here and just getting all the measurements for the model of it. Um, so yeah, um, for uh, a challenge that I like really had was also getting my interview because you had to do a bunch of research to get like the right person and like just getting an interview in the first place, which is pretty hard. But um, my main goal was to get Caesar Milan, who's like, like the god of teaching dogs and all that. Uh, but he's obviously pretty busy to interview an eighth grade, an eighth grade student. So I didn't get him, but it was worth a try. Um, so I would say that people that like really helped me through this process is definitely my mom. She, when I was like procrastinating and just waiting very last minute to do a check-in, my mom was always there to help me to do whatever I needed to get done. And she would just tell me that it's due the next day, so I kind of got to get it done. Um, but yeah, my mom is definitely a big help with everything. And definitely Miss Henrik and Miss Lancaster, who helped me with anything like during my research paper or my note cards. They're just super helpful with everything and just amazing. They were great, a great help. Hey, I'm Archer and I did my research project on customizing guitars. Um, I basically talked about the history of customizing guitars and guitar pedals, effects pedals. For my uh, interview, I interviewed Jim Scott, who was a guitarist who used to play with um, Bob Dylan. And for my service project, I played uh, folk songs and sung folk songs in an old folks home with my friend. Um, challenges I faced were Building this, this is my artifact. Uh, it's basically a guitar that I repaired by replacing all the electronics. Um, and yeah, building this was pretty hard trying to like, put the electronics in. Didn't really understand it, but I 
did it. Yeah, uh, uh, my sources were things like the Smithsonian and Stumac, which is a guitar building company. Overall, the project was really fun. I learned a lot more, and using like, my research paper to help me build this. So, and I got a new guitar out of it. Thank you. My name is Lily Bostic, and my project was on how our relationship with dogs has changed over time. For my research paper, I focused mainly on the advantages of humans working with dogs, um, specifically when domestication first started, and then how dogs were used in war and in religion. Um, for my interview, I interviewed Dr. Nana Desikan, uh, Sophie Barton, and Sierra Geisick. They were very, very helpful. And my research was mainly internet-based, and I looked at research papers, mm. and uh, like the Smithsonian, National Geographic. Um, for my artifact, I used chicken wire to form a dog, and then I sewed a human heart, kind of to symbolize that dogs, in a way, have our hearts. Um, for my service, I did 22 hours of service at the Humane Society, which was really cool because I got to do something I liked, and it was really fulfilling. Uh, my favorite part was probably my artifact because I had a ton of fun with it. It was really challenging though because I struggled with some procrastination and it was something I'd never done before so that was kind of overwhelming. Um, I've always loved dogs so my choice was immediately apparent to me when I knew I could choose my own topic. And this was a really fun project because I feel like I've learned a lot but I got to do something that I really liked. Hi, my name is Jane Perry Collins and for my portfolio project I chose to research the history of women's soccer and so to coincide with that I decided to make a soccer jersey and so this is what the back looks like. My last name is Collins and my soccer jersey number uh, is 98 so I put that on there and I liked these colors so I uh, made this soccer jersey. The process to make this took a really long time so I had to go to Joanne's fabric store and I picked out uh, the blue, yellow, and the pink to make this jersey. So I made it from scratch. Um, my old gymnastics teacher, she is really good with fabric. So I went over to her house and she told me exactly what to do. And I uh, created <laughs> my jersey. And this took a super long time. It took nine and a half hours. The reason why I chose the history of women's soccer is because I've played soccer since I was three years old. And soccer is a really big deal for me. And I love it. It's like my sport. And I also thought researching this topic would also be <laughs> super fun. While making my artifact, there were definitely some hiccups that made me get a little bit scared because uh, the sewing machine, it got stuck on one sleeve, and so it was just continuously sewing one part, so I thought it was going to mess the whole thing up, and I'd have to start over, but it didn't actually do anything, so I'm happy about that, and it looks really good, and sewing the sleeves <laughs> were super hard, and they're shaped really weird, but this whole thing was super fun. I started at 6 o'clock and ended at 11 at night and I think it was worth it. <laughs> oh, and to complete my service hours for my portfolio project, I volunteered at the One Knox Monsters Youth Program, and so it's basically just a bunch of little kids, ages I think maybe four to nine, and so I just helped them learn the basics of soccer so that they got to learn how to pass more accurately and shoot the ball better, and the kids really loved me, I think, and I also helped them tie their shoes, put on jerseys. It was fun. And I learned a lot about little kids and how I have to be super patient with them sometimes. But the whole process was super great and I'm super happy with how my artifact turned out. Hello, my name is Sam Ashley, and on my project, I decided to do the history of the reed organ. So to start off, uh, about in fifth grade, I started to study uh, to play a pipe organ. And along with that, I found interest in reed organs. Bas uh, basically, a reed organ, what it is, is imagine an accordion, which you pump with your feet, and you play with your hands like a piano. Uh, so on my project, I found uh, research on it was very sparse. There was very, uh, there was very little in general. So I had to uh, contact a few people. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a gentleman down in Georgia who is the head of the American Reed Organ Association who I got a lot of information about.
But basically, the reed organ, it came from Europe. Uh, it came after the invention of the accordion in Germany. And uh, it was used a lot in churches, on the battlefield during World War II, and the Vietnam War. Uh, and it was also used in the households a lot. Uh, th so this right here, this is a portable reed organ. This was used by, by chaplains during the war, or was also going around in the US to small churches. Uh, this one was built in 1932 uh, in Los Angeles, and it was owned by a gentleman in Maryville here in, uh, here in Tennessee. So I restored this. It took me about uh, a year on and off to restore this organ, uh, and I got much help from the organ builder in Knoxville. Now for my service, I also, it was over, it was over this past summer, I went uh, to a residence in Fox Den in Farragut, and I helped re uh, re re remove a pipe organ from the house and transport it to Vanderbilt in Nashville. So uh, some of the challenges with my project, like I was saying before, the um, re uh, its research and information on reed organs is very sparse, and also restoring this is my first time uh, trying to work uh, with uh, with leather and working with uh, cloth and just trying to fold it in the right shape and glue it together, uh, it, was, it, was, um, it, was, it was a challenge for sure. But uh, uh, in general, it is, it's a very interesting instrument, has a lot of cool history, and it was really fun to learn about. Uh, hi, my name is Mary Grace, and for my project, I did the history and evolution of ballet. So for my artifact, I did I made a ballet costume based on um, a costume in the famous ballet called Giselle. So the reason I picked this topic is because I've been dancing since I was two, so I've always had an interest in ballet and the art form, so I knew when I had to pick something to study all year, it was an easy choice. For my service, I volunteered to help teach a dance class down at my dance studio. They're about eight or nine years old. And that was really fun. I learned a lot about patience and leadership and um, good core values while I was doing that. Um, one challenge I faced while making my artifact was probably working with all the tool because it sticks together and it's really hard to sew. So I had to learn how to overcome that. So for my interview, I got to talk to two ladies who work at the Joffrey Ballet Company. Their names are Miss Karen and Miss Linda, and they were very helpful. They gave me an insider's perspective, both from like a choreographer perspective and they've been dancers their whole lives, so that was really cool. They talked about like diversity in dance and what they want to see improve and what they think the ballet world does really well. So that was really, really interesting to get to talk to them. And it really helped me with my paper and fully developing my thoughts and ideas. I'd like to thank um, my parents for supporting me through this whole thing and my family. And then I'd also like to thank the people I got to interview and my dance studio, Studio Arts for Dancers, for letting me um, volunteer there. That was really fun. Uh, hello, my name is Silas Collins and my project is on running. And the reason why I chose running was because I've been a runner all my life. And I've been really curious about certain things, like why we get tired while running. And also, I was really intrigued about uh, Eliud Kipchoge's sub two minute marathon, or sub, sub two hour marathon, because it was like a massive historical achievement because no human had ever been able to achieve a running feat that big since uh, Roger Bannister's first sub four minute mile. And I also volunteered at the Knoxville Marathon because I thought that that would tie into my uh, portfolio project really well. And it was cool to see all the runners because, you know, they, they, their age ranged from young, I wouldn't say young kids, probably 20 year olds, all the way up to, you know, people in their 50s. And it was cool to see people just get out there and run. And I handed them like water at the end and, and helped guide them along the course. And it was a great experience overall. And my artifact, I made a model track because um, Sir Roger Bannister's sub four minute mile was a massive achievement in the running community as well back in the 1900s. And I just thought, and I thought that making a track would tie into my portfolio project really well. And my, I guess my, mo I, my, my motivation for doing running again was I had been a runner all my life, and ever since I was in third grade, I just loved to run. And elementary school running, like I wasn't the best starting out, 
but I got really good and I've just been hooked on it ever since. So some of the difficulties was my artifact was originally going to be a track baton, uh, but I didn't think that a track baton in the end would be too interesting, I guess. So I decided to make a mini model track because I thought that that would just I thought that would be cooler. I think that I want to thank probably my dad and my grandma and my aunt, because my dad, he was the one that helped me get all my equipment, and my aunt and my grandma uh, gave me some suggestions. And also my sister, because she gave me some good suggestions that I think uh, helped out my track design and made it look better. I'm Emma Kuhn, and my project was um, the history of fine arts. The reason I chose this, like, my research question was basically, how did the current state of art come to be? Um, I chose it because, I mean, I've been interested in art, like, I don't, I don't know, since, like, preschool. Um, and I wanted to learn about its history, especially because there's, like, a lot of discourse about like contemporary art and I wanted to know why it is how it is. Um, my service project I worked um, with an organization called the Memory Project which works to connect um, like students across the world via art and so um, uh, I created um, a colored pencil drawing of um, uh, a Syrian refugee girl. Um, and basically, I mail it in, and about a month, I'm going to receive a video of like um, them delivering it. Um, for my interview, I interviewed um, Karen McHorder, who is the um, director of uh, museum studies and the curator, the curator for the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, and like the art museum part. I actually um, found her because Miss Henrik knew her, and she like suggested it. And I'd say my biggest difficulty was probably, um, probably the research essay keeping on track with it and like meeting deadlines was hard. A really important part of that is like communication and working with the teachers if you're having like difficulty with that. Um, I'd say my favorite part of this project was um, learning just like the overall knowledge I gained about the topic. Um, I'd like to thank my teachers because they were very helpful in my process. So my name is Caroline Lovegrove and I did the impact of Title IX and how like women got equal opportunities in athletics and education. So for my project, um, I really like women's athletics and I like learning about it and this summer my mom gave me the idea of my topic because I really like to learn about um, women's athletics, history, and education. Um, so when I started my project, I had to interview people, and that was probably pretty hard for me. Um, my mom gave me um, multiple contacts for people to interview, and so did my teachers, and I... The first woman I interviewed was Dr. Ashley Blamey, which she's the Title IX coordinator at the University of Tennessee. And she told me about her job and how um, Title IX, everything Title IX affects at the university. And then secondly, I interviewed Dr. Sarah Hillier, um, which she is the director for the Center of Sports Peace in I can't remember, it's sports piece and something else, but um, she helps me with tons of information. She works all over the world helping like other countries. She works, she does work a lot with Title IX. That's not only, I know she works with the Olympics and the Paralympics and multiple other things. And she helped me like, she helped me contact other people. And then I interviewed um, Miss, Mrs. Joan Cronin which she used to work at the University of Tennessee. Um, and then when I started my artifact, um, I built a collage on 
poster board. I, um, I based it off of the woman in my book that I read this summer. Um, it was 50, 50 Years, Title IX. I forget what, who it was by, but I did the collage off of the pictures I could find of women in my book. Um, my main person in the book was Patsy Mink because she like was the person that kind of like wrote Title IX. Um, my service project, I did a fundraiser for free dress at the school and I donated my money to Play Like a Girl. Play Like a Girl is a organization that helps women, uh, girls like my age um, that like have a competitive, competitive feel in athletics and they help connect them with um, people in STEM and help them have a competitive edge in education um, that they take away from athletics. Um, I also did a second service project and I made a Google Slides for um, the fourth grade at our school and I presented to them like about my topic and why I, why I was there to present to them and I liked teaching them how I got, how I collected information and all about the topic. And then I'd say my most difficult thing was probably trying to get my interviews and also building my artifact. The interviews was difficult because I had to, it took a while for them to respond. Um, so it was a, some, for two of my interviews, I think it was like a month after till I got my interview. So I was like right up against the deadline. And then my artifact, it was really difficult for me because I decided like, five days before I was due that I would like to redo my collage. So I had to recut out all my pictures. And then in conclusion, I really liked learning about Title IX. It was probably one of my favorite projects I've done. Um, I'd really like to thank the women that I interviewed because they helped me a ton with my um, research. And that's it. My name is Anna McLean, and for my portfolio project, I decided to research the history of the Olympics and for my artifact, I created the Olympic rings, and each ring represents a different continent. So um, Asia, Africa, Europe, America, and Canada, they're all included on here. And for my research, what worked best for me was just finding topics that I was really interested in. So like the athletes and the events and how they take place. So I really had to find different ways to research things, but in the end, like I, really focused on like my five main topics. So I focused on the artifacts, so researching about the rings, the athletes, the history, which kind of rolls into my other subtopic, how it took place, and then why the Olympics take place. So my main question was, why do they take place and how do they start? And something that I really found interesting when I was researching is it's just kind of to bring the world together to make it like a better place to let a bunch of people compete that have a competitive aspect to their self, to their personalities. And then for my service project, um, I had a hard time finding something to do, but I decided to volunteer at the Special Olympics, which is an organization here, which they have, if anyone has a disability, like autism, Down syndrome, anything, they can complete, compete in like a series of events and games that bring a lot of the communities together. So I volunteered, and when I volunteered, it was at main event. So I was able to help the kids get into their, like, well, the athletes, they got into their groups. There was bowling, arcade games, and it was really fun. And it, it helped me learn, like, a lot about different things because I've never experienced something like that before. So it kind of showed, like, a different side of Knoxville and Tennessee and stuff. And for my interviews, I interviewed five people. Uh, Dr. Sarah Hillier, which actually works at the University of Tennessee, Michael F. Fugerson, um, Sierra Stuckey, and Ashley Shoemaker, and Mike Fugula. And each person um, helped me find a different way to research. So they all had different titles. One worked more in the technology side of it. Another was a coordinator. So uh, Ms. Sierra Stuckey, she really helped um, people find like their groove like outside of where they were training in the 
training center in Colorado Springs, they really, she helped people like find some stuff to do. So there was a bunch of religious groups so they could go to like a group where they would practice the religion or their religion and they would go to that on Wednesdays or they would have fun. Like there was all different groups and she would just help people find what group they wanted to like participate in after. Um, for my challenges, it was really hard to make the circles, the inside and the outsides of the Olympic rings. And I also didn't have a stand for it until like the night before it was due because I didn't, I wasn't thinking that I needed a stand for them. And some of the research was hard because there was a lot of different things that was said. So they started in the 1800s, but as some said the 1700s, it kind of was just a different, there was a lot of different aspects of the research. So you kind of had to find what was true and you really had to check yourself on your research. I also found it hard for networking during my interviews. I had to find people. So I called the like Olympic Training Center and they would give me people's names and then I would call them and then they would network me to other people. So my goal was to work up to a famous athlete, which was like Simone Biles or someone like that was my main, like that's who I hoped to interview. But she was in Mexico, she was traveling, so it didn't always work out. But I learned a lot researching, and in conclusion, it was a really great experience, and I had really fun doing this project because it helped me learn more about the world and sports. And I really want to thank my family, my older brother especially, who helped me make this, and my teachers. And I really enjoyed this project overall. My name is Caroline Petrie, and I did my project on the effect of reading on early child development. The reason that I chose this project was I've always loved kids and I've also always loved reading. I learned to read at a really young age and I wanted to do a project that sort of entailed both of those and I think that I found a really good project. My artifact was I created a book. It's about a bunny named Hillman and that's because uh, I made a sculpture and my family named it and I decided I wanted to write my book about it because I needed inspiration and it was easy to draw. Um, I wrote the script for the book and I illustrated all of the drawings, which was really hard. That was one of my biggest challenges. I am a perfectionist and it was really hard for me to just like let some of the imperfections go and move on because otherwise I would still be working on it and I wouldn't be finished. My service project, I did two. I, um, first, I created three presentations and gave them to the third grade classes about reading and why they should read and why it helped them. And I also brought some of my old books to my mom's nursery that she works in, and I read to the kids, which was very fun, and I got to know a lot of them, and I still have fun seeing them even now that my official service project is over. I still volunteer at the nursery all the time. And I interviewed two doctors. I interviewed Dr. Stephen Bailey from the UK. I think he was from Cambridge. And that was really interesting because it was just, he had a lot of hands-on work with kids. He like traveled around the world talking about these topics. And it was really interesting to hear that from him. And then I also interviewed Dr. Tina Payne, who was in LA. And she like worked with kids all day, which was also interesting because of the way that she like got to know different kids and how that affected her view on things. My main challenge, like I said, was letting little issues go because that's always been hard for me. And especially with a big project, made it a lot more stressful to stop working and just let it be good enough. My favorite part of my project was either my service project or working on my drawings because I love working with kids and I got to know a lot of the kids I worked with, especially the third graders. It's still fun to like wave to them when I, when I see them and they're really nice. And um, I also loved working on my artifact, even if it was hard to let little issues go. It was also really fun because I love drawing and it kept me motivated to keep working on it because I knew that I couldn't stop, which I'm often tempted to do when I like worry about things. And I like to thank my mom for keeping me from worrying about things too much and also my teachers 
who helped me a lot with like research and everything. I'm Jackson King and um, I picked the project mountain biking, the world's most interesting sport. I began mountain biking during COVID when I had really nothing to do. So like many, my dad decided to pick up a bike and we went out on the trails. This was definitely a start of something fun for me and it ended up leading me all the way here to pick it as my project. I began, when I chose this project, I began researching the topic immediately. I thought it's best that I start somewhere big, like Wikipedia, go down to the sites below and find something. My, I have two artifacts. One represents a pump track, so, uh, a dirt pump track you, would, you could find some, in some places. They're not everywhere. And the other one is a manual machine, which is a skills. It's to help you learn the skill of manualing, which can help you get over things in the woods, like logs. It could also help you if you're going on a dirt pump track like this to build more speed. Um, for my service project, I worked total of 14 hours on the first Saturday of every month starting in December. I worked three hours each time, three to four. And the biggest challenge, I would say, is this Glue, the glue right here, the dirt did not want to stick, so I had to go over and over again trying to um, fix all the little holes and things they're showing. Also, uh, finding somebody to interview was very difficult for me because mountain biking has not become that big of a sport and the professionals just aren't really exposed to the public as much as I believe they should be. And so, all in all, I created these two things to represent my project, totaling around 17 hours of work. And it's pretty fun uh, interviewing people. And prof a professional um, I met, which, who is Anthony Napolitan, he helped me a lot and taught me a lot. He gave me a lot of information for my note cards and stuff I could put in my interview paragraphs. So yeah. Uh, my name is Jack Koch, and my service project that I did for eighth grade was the origin of domesticated dogs because when I was like six or seven, we had a German or a golden retriever part chow and an English bulldog, and I'm always like, what, how did dogs become domesticated and where did they come from? Uh, I've always watched the dog shows on TV and more than a month ago, maybe less, I got the biggest interview of my life. I got the interview with uh, the C, or the president of the Westminster Dog Show. And he gave me a lot of cool information that I had never known before besides that day. Uh, I also got an interview before that with the AKC, the American Kennel Club facility, and yeah. Uh, so during that snowstorm that we had in the end of January, uh, I made this. This is a Lego dog that every, every Lego that is in it got like screwed in, whole 90 degrees. Um, the hardest part of the artifact was actually the legs because I rebuilt the legs three times before I got them right because I had to unscrew it, screw it back, and unscrew it again. In total, the artifacts took me 15, 16 hours. Uh, I went to the Humane Society for my service, and I only did four hours, but in the summer months, I'm going to do every month, I'm going to go back for another four hours. Um, the most difficult part of the project was probably the note cards and then the essay because I made my note 40 note cards on about three topics and I had five, so I had to find. 20 more note cards on those two other uh, topics. In conclusion, I learned that the dogs have been domesticated-ish for about 2,000 years. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Donald Schwartz, 
the president of the Westminster Dog Show. I would like to thank my mom and dad for helping me with the poster and my mom especially because she did get me the dog. Thank you. I'm Ella Gilbert and I did my project on invasive species in East Tennessee. I've always had an interest in nature, especially insects, so I knew I wanted to do something studying the anatomy of them. So I ended up choosing invasive species because I really lo I love biology. I love seeing how different species work because not one species acts the same. Each, each uh, species has their own way of, of getting food and other things. Invasive species are uh, species that are not native to an environment that cause harm to the animals or nature or anything to do with the environment that it is not native to. I did uh, sculptures of the main invasive species I covered. These are not all of them because some were incredibly hard to sculpt. This is a fire ant. This is a Japanese beetle. This is a house sparrow, and this is an emerald ash borer and a wild pig. These all cause harm to some, to um, organisms and plants in East Tennessee where we live. I um, wanted to do something close to our area to see how something can really, how something we, uh, these creatures we can see on a daily basis aren't actually meant to be here and cause a lot of harm to our environment. For my um, research, I use mostly National Geographic and other scientific magazines and, and encyclopedias. And I had the honor of interviewing many scientists for my project. For my uh, service, I, me and my mom, we bought cat and dog food and we donated them to um, humane societies in our area. This project uh, taught me a lot. I learned how to write a research paper, um, conduct interviews with people, and other skills that I will use in my life. I thank the um, people I interviewed and my mother for helping me a lot with this project. My name is Ash Vandewert, and for my project, I did brain surgery. I got into brain surgery because my mom had a brain tumor and she had to get uh, surgery for it. And I always wondered like, how did the surgery happened and she was still with us. For my research, I used lots of government websites and I used those websites to help me look for uh, trusty facts and research I could use for my uh, research paper. And I also used the interview I conducted uh, with the head brain surgeon at Vanderbilt, Dr. Reed Thompson. and. That helped me with some of my work as well. Um, and my artifact is not here right now, but it's a jello brain uh, w that I used a mold with uh, to make it look like a brain like they do in the movies. Uh, but this is my replacement, and it's just a brain that can open and you can see the inside of it. For my service project, I made uh, 65, 60 to 65 cards for the Children's Hospital uh, just to bring some smiles to some faces, which make me feel pretty good. And I learned a lot while making this portfolio project, like how to make jello, for example, and uh, how to conduct interviews and write a really long paper. I've written long papers in the past, but nothing can compare to this. Uh, I had some challenges with lots of deadlines because uh, I'm not very good with deadlines. Um, I would like to thank my dog for giving me the snuggles when I was stressed, my mom for helping me get my interview, my dad for making sure I pushed myself and got to those deadlines, and my teachers for being a great support system, and my friends for taking interest in what I was doing. My name is George Melton. My artifact is a pipe saxophone, and I cut, I cut pipe, turned it into 
Um, uh, I drilled holes into it. Uh, I glued them together with elbow pipes, and then I made a reed. I put a funnel at the end, to make it like a cone, so it look, kind of looked like a saxophone. I made a bend, so it looked like a saxophone. And um, some challenges I went through was um, cutting the saxophone pipes because sometimes you know, I would cut myself on accident, and also cutting the holes because it would keep like drilling around the pipe because it's circular versus circular. And um, other challenges was I did this outside, so the hot glue would dry like really fast, and the pipe glue would dry really fast. So I'd have to like do it on the funnel and the pipes really fast. Uh, I entered a uh, person I interviewed was Donald McCallickson. He's a professional tenor sax and alto sax player. He's um, he's actually he went on a tour when I interviewed him in Barcelona. He's very famous. Um, I want to thank my teachers for helping me go through this and. The Donny, Donald McAllison, he really helped me through this project. Um, Alexander um, Emmanuel, he really helped me. Uh, I liked making the artifacts. I mean, I've, it kind of looks like it's quick and easy, but it kind of took a while. And also, um, working on this project is fun. I don't know about the essay part, though. Uh, my name's Austin Baker, and I did my project on the history of guitar. To make my artifact, I uh, sort of started in layers and I started by taping off everything and painting sort of the front and the back red um, and after I did that um, I had to do the rosette and uh, the circle on the back and the line blue and I did the neck sort of at the same time and then after that I filled in the white details sort of, and the black on the sides. And then I put the tuners in and strung it. Um, overall, I think it took about 10 hours sanding it, prepping it to paint, um, and eventually finishing it, like with a spray-on finish. For the research aspect of the project, I interviewed um, a professor at UT named uh, Denon Sludge Koch. Um, he teaches jazz guitar at the university and gave me a lot of good information about how he got into teaching and sort of how he got into guitar in general. Probably the hardest part about the artifact was painting the black on the sides because the rest of it, when I painted it, I had tape sort of dividing where I shouldn't be painting and for the black I didn't so I really had to be careful and not get it on the front and things. And I chose guitar as my project because I really like the instrument of guitar and I thought it'd be a interesting topic to learn about. Uh, for service I went with a friend to a uh, retirement home in the community called Morning Point, and we played about 10 songs and sang for the residents. Uh, I'd like to thank Archer, because he helped me with the service project, getting that organized and practiced. I'd like to thank Dr. Slage Koch for helping with the interview and just giving me a lot of good information about guitar. Uh, thank you, my parents. Really helped me get the materials for my artifact. Um, they proofread, you know, essays and things. Um, and Miss Hendrick for walking me through all this. Hi, my name is Vincent, and for my portfolio project, I did Legos. Uh, I chose Legos because I have been playing Lego with Legos all my life, and I really just couldn't really think of anything else that I would want to do on this project. Uh, for my research, I went through many websites. I learned how to cite my sources and make a good biography, uh, bibliography. For my artifact, I did a model of the bell tower and Googe Hall out of Legos. And then for my service project, I went to the lower school aftercare and I helped kids build whatever they want with Legos and gave them tips and tricks. Uh, for my interviews, I interviewed Paul Frazen and Marcin Otreba. They are both Lego designers and as a side, are Lego designers as a side hobby, 
And they had, they've created many things such as robots, cars, trans, just transformers. So it was really an honor to interview them and they really helped me with my research. Some of the challenges I faced were finding the right pieces for my artifact as well as doing my bi bibliography. My bibliography took a very long time because I had struggled with it and made a mistake, so I had to fix it, and that was really challenging for me. I would like to thank my mom and my dad for helping with my artifact and planning everything out, as well as my teachers for helping me get through it as well. Hi, I'm Coleman Miller. Uh, I did my project on the Atlanta Braves, kind of the history and like big, like com encompass all of it. Um, I researched the star players, their championship runs, uh, just kind of the history of the team. I researched their stadium and their fan base and like some of the chants that they have. Um, the stadium is like somewhat new. It underwent a bunch of name changes throughout the years and um, this is like kind of close to a model of like the newish stadium. Um, in the stadium there's like the, the, the field itself and then the area around it is called the Battery and um, it's called Truist Park now and it was previously called SunTrust Park because it got like bought out by Truist Bank and um, I built this using like foam board and I cut it with a box cutter and just painted it and used markers and I assembled it using like these little sticky glue things that I stuck it all together with and um, got all this stuff from Jerry's and for my service project I helped coach my little brother's baseball team um, he does Vance League at KYS and he's seven so that was super fun I got to learn how to just kind of like coach little kids and it, it, I enjoyed it a lot because it like I got a big feeling of nostalgia from it because I did the same thing when I was younger and um, some of the challenges I overcame were that uh, my research paper was not great on the first try and I had to revise it a lot and uh, that was really time consuming. Part of the reason was because when we first had done our note cards I did not do great with my sources and so most of those were wrong and that would, came back to bite me afterwards. Um, my motivation to research the Braves was just kind of that they're my favorite team and I just wanted to learn more about them so I don't know, I just I enjoyed learning about it. And um, I want to thank my mom for buying the supplies and helping me through all of it because she enjoys like English stuff. And um, I want to thank Ms. Mueller too because she taught me how to like cut the foam core and I would have been in a bad place if I did not know those tactics. Um, so I just want to thank them and yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Wyatt Gerdes, and uh, I did my portfolio project on lacrosse, and I did this because I started playing lacrosse in sixth grade, and ever since then it's just kind of been like a passion for me, and it's like I spent all my time doing it and watching it on TV, and uh, um, my research completely f from articles off the internet to talk, that talks like specifically about lacrosse and um, I had a few that was like uh, from um, posts off Instagram about uh, like coaches about how what they were doing to teach their players and um, my interview was uh, from, I interviewed uh, a man named Jim, uh, and he coaches at uh, Salisbury University, and uh, he pretty much just told me about like what he does to condition his players to make them better, and how he motivates them. And uh, my artifact is a scale replica of a lacrosse field, and. Um, I made this with a piece of plywood and uh, with felt on top to uh, replicate the grass and I used Lego characters for the players and uh, cardboard for the scoreboard um, and uh, for my service project I helped coach the West JV lacrosse team 
um, for I think two weeks and uh, some of the challenges I had with this project was one, my research paper that wasn't the best over the first um, draft and also uh, figuring out how I was going to make an artifact because originally I was going to create a stick and just a mini Lego field um, but after a lot of trials me and my dad realized that it would be better to just do a field and just make it larger and um, I would like to thank my both my parents because they helped me um, with buying supplies and helping me with making the uh, scale rep model of field and uh, they both helped me uh, with my research paper because uh, my dad would read over it and give it to me and then my mom would read over and give it back um, and uh, Miss uh, Henrik and Miss Lancaster also helped because they uh, showed me what I needed to fix on my research paper because I'm not a best, the best writer. Um, and uh, my mom helped me draw the lines and uh, make the scoreboard. And my dad helped me do the math to create the perfect lines uh, that were to scale. Hi, my name is Sophia Dunaway, and I did a and I did volleyball for my portfolio project. So, first, um, I'm going to be talking about my project. I made a mini volleyball court, and I used a fishing a small fishing net for the net. Um, I used Lego characters for the players, and uh, I made. And then I used skewers for the net poles and the um, antennas. Uh, and I just labeled uh, the uh, 10 foot line, also known as the attack line. And then I said the end line and uh, front zone and back zone. And there's three players in the front and three players in the back. I interviewed BJ Evan Evans and um, I just asked her questions um, about the volleyball players, and she is the uh, manager of the manager of communications for the USA uh, women's volleyball team and national volleyball team. And she was super kind, and she answered all my questions really well. And I'm really glad I got to interview her for my service project. Um, I did. I worked with the Wesley House kids on just some basic volleyball skills. Um, I taught them how to pass the ball and how to set it. And we played a little game and it was really fun and I'm glad I got to uh, do my service project there. And my uh, challenge challenges that I faced were finding someone to interview because it was really hard to find a date that would work for both of us. And um, another challenge was my project because this tape that I used didn't really stick that well. And so I tried hot glue and that didn't work because you could see the outline. And then I tried E6000 and that worked really well, as you can tell. And yeah, that's um, all the challenges that I faced. Um, I would like to thank my mom for helping me out with my uh, project and uh, I would like to thank all the teachers, Miss Henrik and Miss Lancaster and Miss Quaint for letting us do this and interview people. My name is Catherine Dellett and my topic is the costumes of Padme and Amidala from Star Wars. I chose to do this topic because I've always loved Star Wars and Padme has always been one of my favorite characters. Um, and I just love how intricate and detailed the costumes are. Um, for my research, I did a lot of online articles, and I came to Episcopal like late November, so I did not have time to conduct an interview, so I used an online interview of the lead costume designer, Trisha Baker from the People Trilogy. Um, for my artifact, I 
designed for costumes for her. I did a rough drawing and then I transferred them to the final state. And for the wig, I just followed an online tutorial and it's meant to be like a hairstyle for that drawing right there. For my service, I helped Miss Winston create Ursula's tentacles for the play. Um, she had a really neat idea to use like bubble wrap basically, like packaging materials. And so we just used like purple and blue paint as a base and then we used glow in the dark so that they would uh, like really add something to Ursula's scenes. And I learned a lot like um, using materials like whatever you have available and conventional materials. Um, and like I said before, I came to Episcopal late November, so that was hard. Um, luckily, I didn't have to write a research paper. I had to do an annotated bibliography, and I only had to do two hours of service, but still, I felt those deadlines and rushing to get everything done, so that was definitely a challenge. But I was able to do it all in the end. Um, and this project has taught me a lot, like conducting research, managing my time, um, so uh, I will carry these things on to high school and college, and I'm really grateful for that. And I'm grateful to Ms. Henrik and Ms. Lancaster for giving me lots of advice, and of course Ms. Winston for helping me uh, with my service, service, allowing me to do that. And of course I could not do any of this without my parents helping me buy materials, also giving me advice, so thank you. Hello, my name is Sabine Bobsick. And my research project was on overfishing and how humanity affects the oceans. The reason why I chose this was because I really enjoy everything ocean related and I want to be a marine biologist when I grow up. I got an interview with Dr. Kaylin Simmons and Dr. Ben Meadows. Uh, ben Meadows was kind of a last minute interview because I couldn't find very many people and luckily he accepted. It was very last minute. My artifact is our resident aquariums showing how humidity affects the oceans and the death and destruction we've caused. Uh, as you can tell, you know, this one's healthiest, unhealthiest. Um, my greatest challenge was this artifact because I had not worked with resin before and having a new material was extremely challenging to figure out how to use it and what are the dangers of using resin. My service project was to pick up trash in the waterways uh, so that I can protect fish from consuming it. And it was a lot of fun just because I got to see exactly what we've done to our waterways so close up. I would like to thank my parents for helping me so very much with this. And I also would like to thank all my teachers for being so kind and caring when I did not have what everything ready in time. Hi, my name is Rory, and my service project was on mental health. I wanted to choose this topic because I had always really been interested in that kind of thing, and I've done a ton of just research on it in general in my free time. Um, the challenge that I had while trying to do this project was just trying to meet deadlines because a mix of just this and a ton of other schoolwork made it kind of hard, and the fact that I procrastinate sometimes. My artifact that I did was I tried to make a website using stuff like Google Sites and Procreate, things like that. That's just kind of like a break students can have, so it includes things that just might be helpful for them to learn how to calm down, or things that might help them take a little break break if they needed it and uh, music to listen to and things like that. The research that I did, I just tried to find as many like, informational like documents and stuff professionals have written throughout the years. Since it's becoming a more well-known topic and people have been trying to find more information and ways to help people with mental issues. So when, uh, um, I got to interview one person, her name was Letitia Flores and she was um, kind of the head of a um, mental and uh, mental health facility in the UT. She did a lot more than that, but that was one of the main things. She allowed me to talk with both her and one of her students she was working with about all the kinds of questions I was trying to ask, and she was really helpful. Um, and for my service project, I got in contact with Mobile Meals, and I was able to make 
or I have like, like around 30 cards that allowed me to like deliver them to people that they sent food to while, you know, while they were delivering food. I made uh, around 30 cards and I was able to write messages that might help people who are struggling a little bit more right now. I would like to thank my parents because they uh, helped me and tried to remind me when I had stuff to do. And I'd like to thank my teachers for understanding when I when I messed up a little bit and for trying to uh, for helping me understand more when I had questions.